This is Joanna's new book, A Queen for All Seasons. So this is your celebration of... Yeah. ..or you sharing your joy about her presence with her, a celebration of Queen Elizabeth II on the uh, verge of her Platinum, platinum Jubilee. Platinum Jubilee. That's platinum, that's 70 years. 70 and years. And so 2022 is the accession, which means that that's when she became Queen. 2023 will be when she was crowned Queen, but when her father died, she became Queen in February, uh, 70 years ago. And this was an idea that was brought to me, and I thought, how fantastic. The Queen never gives interviews, so we don't know a great deal about her. We know we have her broadcasts and her Christmas messages, we read stuff written about her, endless books written about her, but we don't kind of really know what it's like unless you've been lucky enough maybe to meet her or to glimpse her. So these are gatherings from all kinds of people, from very grand statesmen, people like Ban Ki-moon and Khrushchev and Winston Churchill, right down to little kids who saw her passing by on the street and were allowed to go and give her flowers, right down to, to people um, like Rob Halford from Judas Priest, who went to Buckingham Palace <laughs> and heard the Queen say heavy metal. He said, I never believed I'd hear the Queen say the words heavy metal. <laughs> um, right down to Cliff Richard and Terry Wogan, down to all kinds of people, people who knew her intimately. And it's bits from diaries, it's bits from letters, its accounts, its first-hand accounts, its state's sort of um, um, reports and so on. And it's making a kind of mosaic of this extraordinary woman who dedicated her life to the service of this country and of the Commonwealth, which she's done just literally without fault for 70 years. Yeah. Unbelievable. She really has. Yeah. She? Mm. I met Prince Philip a few times and he yes. was a character. And you, and you were... Are you a fan of his? Were you a fan yes, of his? Yes, I, I loved him. I think he was very badly reported with the press because most people who met him simply loved him. He was frightening. He was like meeting an eagle sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, he'd turn his hawk eyes upon you and he'd go... Rrr, rrr. And once I was at a, a, a charitable thing at the Imperial War Museum, it was about Burma and the... And the, the you know, the Because you veterans. had a family connection with that. And I had fa family connection because my father was with the Gurkhas. And I'd come down for, from Scotland and especially for this big ceremony at the Imperial War Museum. And I'd flown down, and the tra taxi got caught in the jam, and I arrived there, puff, puff, pan, went up to where the thing was in the steps, and I had to wait by the side because of the ceremony had started. And afterwards, he came up to me with those great eyes, and, whoosh, and he went, you were late? And I went, <laughs> yes, at Royal Hines. But, I mean, the thing is, I had to come down from Scotland. He said, so did I. <laughs> <laughs> of course, he'd come on a private plane. Yeah, it was yeah, like very different, different. You know. I met him once. I was doing something for the uh, Prince's Trust in yeah. London, of course, and I went to the thing, and they, you, you get introduced before I was hosting this thing. And he saw me, and he came, and he went, ah, oh, surprised they let you in. <laughs> 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 You've met Charles a lot. Yes, of I course. have. And, of course, do you think... What's your opinion? If someone obviously admires and has studied the world family, do you think he'd be a good successor? I do. I mean, I think the difficulty is, is that practically everybody here, practically everybody watching, can only ever remember the Queen. Mm. We've never had yeah. somebody who's ruled for, you know, five years or 22 years or something like that. All we've known is the mm. Queen. But the truth is, she said in something she once said that she trained up Prince Charles to be the best possible person to be king. She's trained him up, and he's been quite exemplary. No matter what you think about monarchy in general, you've got to look at the work that these people do. And with his Prince's Trust, which is looking after yeah. the most vulnerable people in society, and many of us have had the great luck to be part of some of the good things they're doing and to see the effect it has on people, you just think, no, this, is, this will be OK. I need to ask you, though, at the moment, of course, the family, and we see them as a family, and we, know, we think we know about them, maybe we don't, and, of course, we don't really know what's going on, but there is division there, clearly. Do you think that will get resolved? Is that something which you can see? I don't see? know, because I think we all look from the outside and we don't actually know what's going on on the inside. We second-guess it. Mm. And I, I think, I have a suspicion, that that family is much closer than we think. That's nice to hear. Mm. So you heard it here first. There will be a new line of duty. <laughs> <laughs> And William and Harry, the brothers, close. <laughs> <laughs>